Back in February of 2014, um, Bella started having some issues um, in regards to simple things, holding a pencil, walking, um, pain. We took her to um, our pediatrician several times actually. We went to an orthopedic doctor through his um, referral. Orthopedic doctor suggested that we get um, we start with an x-ray, so it started with an x-ray. X-ray turned into um, an MRI, and the MRI is where we found that um, there actually was cancer. She um, did have a very rare form of leukemia. The only thing that they could really tell us is that um, to begin treatment, which did start right away in June, um, is that it would have to be aggressive. January, we would find out that um, she's in remission, able to claim survivorship in August of 2016. You know, you strive to do the best for your children, and you never once think to yourself, what if? That never, that never crossed my mind. So when what if happened, <laughs> um, you know, it was nice to know that we had a lot of support here at the hospital. This was home. Going home was, <laughs> you know, it, it, it was nice to be home, but we had become so comfortable being here, knowing that, you know, that the caretakers and the doctors and you know, just everybody that's here helping. The, the passion and goals at uh, the Ripon Foundation, how this came about, was from a personal experience. Uh, having Andrew uh, in our lives for a short period of time and losing Andrew, um, I wanted to make sure, one, that you know, his legacy will always be uh, continued throughout uh, Spokane and, and, and that a family will never have to worry about going through this alone. I think one of the greatest things is the people that we dealt with uh, when Andrew was going through his, um, his treatment. Uh, those people had great compassion for, for the patient, Andrew, and uh, to make sure that his chances of, uh, of opportunity of surviving uh, were going to be the best. And and I think that's what we want to do with the Ripon Foundation. We want to make sure that all families, one, aren't in this alone, uh, that they have an opportunity and, and a chance to go through this and afford it all the opportunities that they can to have the, the, the most successful outcome possible, and that's to be a cancer survivor. And uh, for those families and these kids, uh, to be there with them and, and be a part of their lives and really kind of invest in, in uh, them coming out the other side is, is, is why we're here and what we, what we do at the Ripon Foundation. In the very beginning, a coin gave us a patient care bag, and this care bag gave us resources that I really didn't even know were going to help or were even going to matter. You're overwhelmed by seeing this ginormous bag just filled with all of these things. References, stamps, envelopes, a binder, just information on what the journey may look like. You know, it turns out that everything in that bag was necessary. There was about 45 days where um, she was literally confined to four walls and couldn't leave her room. And the first thing she wanted to do when she did take her first few steps was come out to the terrace and shoot some hoops. It's what she enjoyed doing. She wanted to come out here. She wanted to play I Spy. She wanted to just breathe the air, just be outside, you know, blowing bubbles, just anything to, to be out here, that really helped. It was, it's a good transition for them, you know, knowing that they still have, you know, access, they're not so confined, you know, they, they can come out here and have a good time. She's learned to love music through um, Terry, the therapist here, the music therapist. She loves playing music and her art. Those things helped her remember who she was. You never want cancer to define who you are. And those outlets were a way of reminding her that she was still there.
to all our programs that really enable these children uh, through the, their worst of times um, to have hope. That's what Andrew wanted. That's what Andrew was afforded uh, when he went through his treatment. He, he had the best of, of care. He had the best uh, people taking care of him. We want to make sure that's available to all our, all our uh, little, little kids that uh, come through here. And As long as kids are, are, are fighting cancer and their families are going through this and the child is going through this, we'll be there. We'll be there through every, every step of the way. There were times where we found it hard to be thankful for anything, especially going through what Bella was going through. And every time we'd sit down, we'd literally find things to be thankful for. And we were very thankful for those that gave. Very thankful for those that made all of this possible. All of it. Very grateful. I think the journey would have been much different without the support. These pictures of these kids and the videos we have of these children uh, is a telling, tell, a telltale sign of, of what our dollars are doing and, and, and why we're uh, able to do the things we're able to do and, and why we keep uh, Andrew's name and, and his legacy um, intact um, because no, no family should have to uh, put their child before, before them but unfortunately it happens and, um, but if we're there for these families and we're there to help it and make their experience a little bit better I think, uh, I think we're doing the right thing.